Hello and welcome to the Niobrara National Scenic River. My name is Bobby Rochon and I'm a park ranger for the National Park Service. Today I'm filming in front of Fort Falls, one of over 200 waterfalls located along the Niobrara River. Fort Falls is actually located about six miles east of Valentine on the Fort Niobrara National Wildlife Refuge. Most of the waterfalls found along the Niobrara River are on private property, so please keep in mind the respect landowners' rights when floating the river. But in the refuge, you can hike and find some of those waterfalls. So when you think about waterfalls, do you think about waterfalls that kind of form in and cut into themselves like this? Or do you think about waterfalls that poke out kind of like this? Well, there's actually two different kinds of waterfalls. There are concave waterfalls that fall in, and then there's convex waterfalls, which are the waterfalls you find along the Niobrara River. Uh, the perfect example of this is Smith Falls, which is the tallest waterfall in Nebraska. It's also the tallest one along the Niobrara National Scenic River. So along the Niobrara River, we have waterfalls that range from a couple inches tall all the way up to the height of Smith Falls. This month's Nature Creations is going to be a candy waterfall, and you're going to learn a little bit about how the volume is uh, calculated on how water comes over the waterfall. So stay tuned. Have fun. Hi, I'm in the Niobrara National Scenic River Visitor Center. I'm standing in front of a picture of the Niobrara River behind a table that has a couple of cups on it, three cups to be precise, a plastic bottle turned into a funnel, a bowl type thing, <laughs> another water bottle, and then I have a ruler, cutting instruments, and then some paper in front of me. Nature Creations is a free virtual experience offered by the Niobrara National Scenic River. It is perfect for children of all ages, including children at heart, it's a great way to get out and explore the Niobrara National Scenic River from the comfort of your living room. All of our Nature Creations activities can be done with using household materials that you can find every day. And you can also find all of our past activities online at our website. So for our activity this week for Nature Creations, we're doing an activity called Candy Waterfalls. So to do this, you're going to need an adult that can actually act as your helper too. And you're going to need them to do two different things throughout the course of this creation. One is to cut the bottle for you. So you want the bottle to kind of look like this, but you're going to start with this one. And you're going to cut it down. The other thing you're going to need them to do is help you hold this so that you can get the candy and everything in there. So you can hit the stopwatch before you get started. So we're going to get into it today. So first things first, you want to make sure you have your container for your candy waterfall. You want to make sure you have the candy, the most important part of this, because you get to eat it later, right? And then you're going to want to have your cylinder or your funnel. And you want to make sure you measure out the correct amounts each time. And depending on how you measure it, it's going to depend on, on how you do the math later. So if you're doing a four ounce waterfall, you're going to need to know if it was four ounces exactly in order for this to work, for the math to work. Now, like I said, we're going to need our bowl to catch it all in. You're going to need your funnel and then you need the candy. Step number one, have an adult prepare the plastic water bottle so it can be used as a funnel. To do this, carefully cut the bottom off as close to the end as possible and carefully cut the top off until the opening size is about 1.3 inches diameter. Um, you can also use a regular funnel, but you'll need to measure the size in order to get the correct ratio for time. Uh, measure out at least one cup of the largest type of candy you want to test. The more candy you use, the better your results will be. Exactly how much candy did you measure out? Write this down on a piece of paper. So, you can do this with one person, it's a little tricky, but you can do it. Take the bottle you cut and flip it upside down. Have the helper hold the cut bottle, which you will use as a funnel, over a bowl and block the 1.3 inch wide opening. Pour the measured candy into the top and make sure none leaks out of the bottom. Get the stopwatch ready and then have a helper quickly remove their hand and gently shake the funnel. Time how long it takes for all the material to go through the funnel and into the bowl below it. Write the time it took down on your piece of paper. So we're going to write that time down. Three. And then we're going to move on to our next candy. You can either leave the candy in here or you can dump it out so that you can do each one separately. Our next size is going to be our star tarts, which is this one right here. If you see Smith, yeah. If you get a chance, you should go see Smith Falls State Park, located along the Niobrara River. So here are our star tarts. We're going to reset and then start. It's a little tricky doing the start and stop when it's just you. Once again, dump out the candy. 
And then our final one, which is our smallest one, these are chocolate covered candies, also called CCC. And they're a lot smaller than these other ones, so we're gonna see how that fixes the time. So we're gonna go ahead and get those set. Reset our stop clock. And one, two, three. Now you wanna make sure you don't start snacking on your candies until after you've done the experiment part. So we're gonna move all this stuff out of the way. Our funnel, our candies. Now we're gonna start doing the math. Now math can be fun, and this is a great way to do it because you get to eat the candy as you're doing the math. So with this Nature Creations, what we were basically figuring out is the volumetric flow rate of how long it takes our waterfall to flow. So the candy is gonna be the volume, which we know of, uh, which we know is eight ounces. This would be uh, kind of calculable to how much water is coming out of a waterfall or a spring, and you can calculate that using the tennis ball method or the basketball method, and how long it takes you to float a hundred of those past you in per second. That's a topic for another day, though. And then you can also, and the other thing is, you need to know the time it took for this to happen. So, in order to get the volumetric flow rate, let's say our jelly beans, we need to know exactly how long it took to do that. That's the reason why you need the stopwatch for this creation. Calculate the volumetric flow rate of the candy to do this. Divide the volume of the candy by the time it took to flow through the funnel. So, we know that with our jelly beans, we had eight ounces of those, which is one cup. We know our time was about 2.33 seconds, give or take. Again, this is gonna depend on how big your opening is and how much um, space you have from the top to the bottom of your funnel. And then you will time that and then you'll divide it. So eight ounces divided by the time it took, so 2.33 equals about 3.433. It's a lot of threes in a sentence right there. <laughs> so that's how you figure out the volumetric flow rate. And you can do this with our waterfalls as well, if you know how much flow is coming out of them. I want to thank you for taking this time with us today to do our nature creations on waterfalls. I hope you enjoy that candy you guys got to do along with it. If you guys are going to be going out and doing any kind of hiking at the Fort Niobrara National Wildlife Refuge and especially the Fort Falls Trail, especially in February and January and winter months when there's still ice on the trail, make sure you're wearing ice cleats and taking your time. I want to thank you and we'll see you out on the river this summer. Enjoy!